So I recently did a video about MVIS that wasn't received very well. Here's an update. This may very well be the most important MVIS video that you watch, especially if you care about your money. A lot of MVIS investors did chip in, and I considered every single one of those more than 500 comments that were left on the video. I've got Chris from Spot On Analysis with me. We both put in a lot of work to answer all of your questions and get everything out on the table. So make sure you do smash that like button or maybe even the dislike button if you don't like the video or the DD, but you're gonna wanna stick around. This is gonna be the most important MVIS video that you're gonna find on YouTube and we're gonna be starting right now. Hey, what's going on? It's Pat from Top Ticker Trades. If you're new here and you want to learn how to use stocks and options to make your portfolio go parabolic, make sure you start now by subscribing and tapping that bell so you never miss an upload. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to yet another MVIS video. So, I'm going to make this very quick. This is going to be a two-part series, okay? Because there's just not enough time for us to answer or get to all of the comments that you guys left and address everything that we do need to address. This is a long video. Bear with us if you care about your money because this stuff is important. And uh, make sure you smash that like button. Give us some uh, feedback in the comments section. Let us know what else you want us to cover. But without any further ado, let's get started. A couple of weeks ago, maybe less than that, I put out a video. Chris was on it. We kind of presented, or I, I presented a bear case on microvision. And yeah, I was a little aggressive in the video, but uh, that's because I already knew what would happen when I put out a bearish case on microvision. Okay, and exactly what I anticipated and expected to happen is exactly what I got. A bunch of uh, hate comments, or mostly hate comments, about 500 of them, about 255 dislikes on the video, and I still wanna push you guys, I, I think you guys can get it to about 300 at least, that's what I keep telling you in the comments. I think y'all need to work harder, okay? I'm working extra hard to you know report on this company and tell you guys the truth and here you guys are can't even get me to 300 dislikes anyhow i've got chris here and you know if i was a jerk i wouldn't even have brought chris here today because you know he put out two videos after that after that video we put out where he kind of uh, said some negative things about mvis but that was just strictly based off of financials and then he did some real digging into the company but some of you guys we're like, well, he doesn't know anything. He's just talking about, he's just basing all his, uh, what he's saying off of financials. Well, yeah, he was. I mean, <laughs> isn't that the first thing you look at when you're talking about investing in a company? Right, they're not called financial analysts for nothing, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, is that what you call them these days? Uh, so, yeah, he, Chris does make a good point here. But, you know, that's that was his assumption, uh, the things that he said in that video were based off of the financials of the company. And since the video got over 500, you know, negative comments, I mean, people just really hating hard, essentially Chris felt that, you know, maybe there's something more to this company that we're missing, you know, and listen, when we're wrong, when I'm wrong, I'm going to get on here and I'm going to apologize and tell you guys that I was wrong. Chris is the same way. Chris dug in. I mean, the man <laughs> had like a 30... 39 page report that he did took him over a week then he presented his findings on two different videos which are like close close to about 40 minutes a piece okay and i did watch these videos and i thought that the dd in these videos was incredibly good i think you guys need to watch them and not necessarily you know he wasn't necessarily bearish on the company and i'm, I'm gonna i am gonna let him talk more about that but i do want to tell you guys, encourage you guys to go and watch those. If you're invested in microvision or if you're thinking about getting into microvision, he put everything together into his model and came out with a price target on the company. Pretty darn accurate for, you know, where microvision sits today based on, you know, everything, everything I mean, that's we, finalized. I did. I want to be clear to the uh, Ticker family that I do not have smoke and mirrors included. 
I do not have the rumors included. I have no information from the Reddit rooms included. Uh, but I do enjoy reading that information. So, But it is not in a financial model because it has no financial substance today. So I just want to be clear with the family. But uh, sorry for interrupting you. Go ahead oh, and no continue, problem. Pat. Um, so I guess, you know, what we're talking about here today, I guess what I'm, my point here today is you got to be aware of the extrinsic and intrinsic value. Now, intrinsic, in short, just basically means what the company is actually worth. Extrinsic value is, you know, we're factoring things in that have not happened yet, that we, you know, that are not concrete. It's our expectations of what the company will be worth in the future, and it's being priced into the share price today, okay? So you can't really always go with extrinsic value. Not that you shouldn't be buying stocks like this. You should have a certain amount of your portfolio allocated to stocks like these if you choose to invest in stocks like these. So what I want to do, I was going to let Chris uh, talk about uh, some of his findings in general. Just you know, give us a brief rundown of what his analysis was. Then what I wanted to do was address some of these comments that were made on my videos and uh I think Chris may have a couple of comments that were put on his videos that he may want to talk about. But well, I addressed those at the end of video two. So oh, that's right. I'll let you guys have all the fun addressing these. So okay, that's cool. And uh, if if after today, guys, if you have more questions, I'll come back next Sunday and we can do this all over again. This stuff is uh, fun to me. I know Pat uh, doesn't mind me coming over. So uh, no, not at all. Keep flooding them out. Um, we're gonna try to get to. All of the comments on my channel that were actually like legit comments, like meaningful comments. Um, I will say that probably like 90% of them were people just being haters and telling me I'm an idiot. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm talking about. And that's fine. I mean, in the end, we're going to see who does and who doesn't know what they're talking about. But I think you guys misunderstood me in the first place. I think you guys misunderstood <laughs> the whole concept or the whole concept of everything that I put out and said in that video. And I think Chris can do a pretty good job explaining to you how everybody has an inner bull and an inner bear on just about any stock. Uh, you want to tell them about that, Chris? Sure, Pat. We can, we can go ahead and get into it. I think we have uh, five or six points uh, for the second half today where we're going to get into uh, the questions about patents. And we had one good uh youtuber leave a comment where he you know he had questioned whether we included a lot of data and he was real specific about it so uh, we do actually learn things from you guys talk a little bit about the competition the value of the lidar the impairments but as far as mvis goes in my analysis i want to just be clear uh, the name of it is bulls or, or bs part one and part two and you have to get into the psychology. You have to understand, Pat, a lot of the audience that you're talking about with this NVIS got in at under a dollar. So yeah. you have to put yourself in their shoes because if I had got in at one dollar, I would be bullish as well. And yeah. when I say everybody has an inner and a bull and bear, you you look no further than a derivative market because everyone has gone long on the stock has also shorted the stock. You're always bullish or bearish, you know, depending on what the asking price is. And I was, you know, I was making references to a, a YouTuber that left a comment that said, you know, your video sounds uh, bearish. I'm like, yeah, I'm a little late to the party. I did all this research. I'm a little late to the party. But if I had got in where you got in at, yeah, I would be all for the bulls. But I believe the price is a little high now for me to get in. I'm just late. I'm not hating the stock. I'm just hating the fact that I'm late to the party. So with that being said, you know, I was able to shed some light on my position. I, and the purpose of the price target that I put out is 90% of the microvision uh, stockholders, you know, you guys out there don't know what the company is really worth right now. And what I put out, the work that I put in, it was almost uh, two one-hour videos, was to provide if you don't have time or the know-how to analyze a stock and do equity analysis on it, I put the baseline out there. Everybody wants to know what it's worth. What is this worth before I buy it? You know, if the company stopped and went out of business today, what was the intrinsic value today? If they don't sign another contract, 
if they have to live off all these royalties, what is it worth? And this is just a starting point on the valuation of the firm. So uh, one common question I got, and I have uh, two or three here to address real quickly, uh, was did I include, you know, speculative contracts, the rumors? My answer to that would be no. This is financial analysis, not psychology analysis, not stock uh, market uh, tendencies. It's none of that. This is just financial statement analysis, what was turned into the IRS, what was turned into the SEC. And a lot of information that I used was straight from the CEO's mouth and Mr. Ho's mouth. So this is what these upper level executives are telling the providers of capital. That's what I used. A lot of uh, comments, oh, did you include the Microsoft contract? And I, I would say, no, I am aware of it. I'm aware of uh, some of the implications that it may have, but I didn't include it because Microvision didn't even include it. They make no mention of it, uh, the Microsoft uh, contract. I know a lot of it is uh, secrecy and, you know, uh, patents and, you know, what have you. But until they mention it, until they account for it on their financial statements, it does not belong in financial analysis. Now, it can go into research reports. It can go into YouTube or bloggers or, you know, it can it can create a lot of fanfare. But until the rubber meets the road, it hasn't met the road. Another question that I always, you know, another common one that I was getting asked was about patents and the 400 patents. And did you even consider those? Well, if you uh, recall on part one of the video, that was a disappointing uh, area of the company because of a, a technologically advanced firm like MVIS, would, you would expect a lot of value to be found on the balance sheet as far as these uh, intangible items were concerned. It is not the case. I did not value them in the financial analysis because Microvision themselves do not value them. They have invested $70 million in R&D. They only carry less than $1 million of value on the balance sheet in all of these patents combined. And they've just stopped funding or reapplying for a patent license for $160,000 worth of them. So why so many uh, MVIS fans are excited about this patent backlog when MVIS themselves, the creators, the patent holdings, are not excited at all. In fact, they're writing them down every year, uh, writing the value down impairments on their balance sheets. If you want to question someone's analysis on NVIS, make sure at least go and read or skim through what the management is saying. I feel like these, uh, you guys, a lot of people put money into the company and don't even listen to what the people are saying. Uh, you're just listening to what, you know, the herd mentality. They, I have a lot, Pat, I got a lot of hate comments or statements for even uh, calling out Summit on some of the things he said. And they thought I said it, and I had them go back and look at the uh, presentation. And when they found out it came straight out of Summit's mouth, they were no longer mad at me. Right. But you're not mad at him now. <laughs> so what's up with that? It's mad if I say it. But if he said it, it's cool. So it, it it's a lot of. Uh, you know, back and forth with that. But everything I said, everything I put into that model was straight from NVIS. This is what they are trying to tell providers of capital. And a lot of people just don't read it. They don't have time to read it and interpret what these folks are saying. They'll just go buy the stock and get mad at you for reading the data that the company is putting out. I'm not putting words in any of them. If you go watch Bulls of BS Part 1 or Part 2, I take everything they say and put it in chronological order, and this is straight from their mouth. Again, it may sound uh, bearish to a lot of people, but it is only bearish because I can't get the stock at 70 cent like so many other soon-to-be millionaires out there uh, was able to do. And that's what these people aren't understanding, or a lot of them. A lot of people just expect you to pump the stock and are mad because they're holding the stock, and you know they feel that we're saying negative negative things about the company, which isn't necessarily the case. Look, exactly like you said, at a certain price point, I would be bullish. At today's price, I'm not bullish, I'm bearish, and that's all I've said. Now, people will interpret that in, in any way that they want, and they want to start talking about all these what-ifs. Well, they don't call them what-ifs. They, they act as if these what-ifs 
have already happened or are guaranteed to take place for this company. For instance, you know, the company doesn't really have a single product that's ready to roll yet, but people are acting as if they have a product, it's ready to go, it's the best tech out there. I mean, we do not know that. Okay, you're it, it, there's a lot of speculation and you have to just call it for, you know, call it what it is. This this seems to only happen with the Microvision crowd. It seems like there's a there are a lot of newcomers that are invested in this company. And they're following, you know, what, what other people are saying on message boards, Reddit, whatever whatever the case may be. But they're not, they probably don't even know where to go and find the 10K. So, literally, you're hanging on the words of what these other shareholders of the company are exactly. saying. Exactly, exactly. And these shareholders, you got to think, they, when did they get in? And if they're telling you they got in at a certain price point or that they're buying or adding at a certain price point, you know, for one, even if they are, if they got in at, you know, let's say under a dollar, well, their average is still going to be significantly lower than yours. But then can you can you honestly believe what they're telling you? And I'm not saying they're lying. All I'm saying is this, you know, you got to look at the entire picture. You got to look at everything. You got to question everything. You know, you're investing in a speculative company. We don't have anything concrete here at, as of now to go off of. So it's all speculation. You you have to understand that. And a lot of uh, newer people probably don't. So uh, I'm going to just give you an analogy, uh, Pat. Outside of, of finance, let me just put, that in, put this into perspective for the Ticker family. Uh, let's just say you, you listening to this. Look in the mirror. I'm talking to you. You get this, you have a friend and you're looking for an apartment and the guy says, hey, I'm written down, I'm written over at Pleasant Point. It is crazy. You wouldn't believe it. This this apartment's a dollar a month. Why don't, you know, why don't you get over here? So when your lease runs out, you go to Pleasant Point and all of a sudden you get there and they're like, no, it's $14 a month. Now it's gone up 14 times what it used to, what it cost in your buddy. And you're like, why is it going up so high? Oh, well, they may build a uh, beach and an ocean across the street and they, it may have a view. So we got to charge, we got to go up 14 times on the rent um, to compensate for what may happen over there. And you're like, you're crazy. That That's just a landfill across the street. No, but you never know. They could build a beach and, and, and drug it out like the Panama Canal. And we're charging $14 uh, a month now. And we're talking about ones and fourteens, but to put it in perspective, uh, Pat, you get your phone handy. What is Tesla trading at today, or Amazon, or just Tesla's close to seven hundred, like so, six eighty nine. So something. it's six eighty nine. So what is six eighty nine times fourteen dollars? Six eighty nine times fourteen would be nine thousand six hundred and forty six dollars. Right. So it's it's gone from six hundred to nine thousand dollars. And you're like, wait a minute, why I can't get this deal your but my buddy's got? And it's because we might build an ocean across the street. And you're like, you're crazy. We're in the middle of town. Our state is landlocked. I mean, we're in Nebraska. Where do you mean ocean? You never know, man. You want to pay the 14 or not? So this is this is how silly this sounds when you boil all of this hype off of this stock. Again, I want to be bullish on the stock. I've got a, a reminder set. On my Robin Hood, it's like, hey, if MVIS goes down anywhere close to two or three dollars a share, I want to get in. I've seen this technology. I just don't believe it's a market for it yet. Uh, people, you know, they talk about competition. I, I don't even want to hear it. You're in competition with what? What are you competing against? You don't even have anything for sale. I mean, how how am I got a rival drug dealer that I'm competing with, and I don't even have drugs to sell? I'm not in competition with the drug dealer. You know, I mean, they're not listening. They're not worried about me. Right. I mean, you could be like, oh, the Lakers are our competition. Yeah, only if you have a basketball team. But if you don't own a basketball team, the Lakers are not your competition. So this, again, this is how silly this sounds to financial analysts. And they, and this is the reason it is so hard to analyze this company and nobody will touch them because no company wants to assign analysts to cover this stock. It is a waste of time. You look at Morningstar, they got one page of data on. 
And they say it's extremely uncertain. They're extre- th- This is Morningstar saying, look, we're extremely uncertain about these guys. So, so yeah, this is the type of stock that I would love to speculate on. I'm just waiting on the price to come down a little bit. It's not hate. It's all love. I'm just hating that I didn't get in where you guys got in at. That's all. Anyhow, Chris, what I do want to address very quickly, uh, I do have a question for you. How significant is... Um, Okay, what is the most significant aspect of this company in terms of what they are working on right now? Are they worried about um, the components that are in the hollow lens? Are they mo- more focusing on the LiDAR? Like, what's, what's significant to them in their eyes, in the company's eyes? Again, straight from management's mouth. And I, for some reason, I believe uh, a lot of this stockholders and MVIS would even argue that. But anyway, uh, these guys are all in on LiDAR. They, I've heard it. Oh, they've got 400 patents. Well, you know what? They're not working on anything but one right now. And as far as like the value of the LiDAR now, it's worthless. They have a lot of R&D, but until it sells, it's worthless. I I've, I've get asked all the time, oh, what about these products and this product and this? Okay, they're cool. They're legit. I like them. They look pretty cool. But no one's buying them, so guess what? It's not a market for them. They don't. They don't have a product. We. Are, this is a cash flow machine, and this is so hard for people to wrap their brains around. I am no emotional ties to this company, and you have to remove your emotion. And so many people have gotten emotionally involved with this company, like a relationship, and where you don't mix business and emotions together. And this is a business, not a relationship of somebody you date and i think they've what is that old saying you don't uh get your honey where you make your money you got to keep both of them separated and i looked at them as a business because i don't have a position in them so I, i'm at liberty to do that and i want to know one thing how much money do you make and how much does it cost for you to make it period anything before that or after that is bs and that is where the bs portion of the uh, presentation I put together was it's uh, everything that's driving this stock is outside of that sentence how much money do you make and how much does it cost you to make it a la how profitable are you and if you're profitable we can we can dance if you're not we can't dance so go ask your mortgage, mortgage company how long you can keep your house if you're not uh, personally profitable in your daily life that's a good uh, good question to ask them I wonder what their answer would be. <laughs> a month or two, maybe. We don't know. Yeah. I guess you already addressed all of your, all the comments that you were going to address from your channel. Well, I think uh, I wrote some scribble scrabbish down here, but I think I addressed them. We talked about the, the patents and, you know, basically until they get acquired by someone who could use them, uh, they're worthless. So, you know. But it was it was one uh, YouTuber left a really good comment. I, I believe was going to address where was it from my yes. channel? Okay, let me. I was actually you know a little bit impressed by it. He done a little homework and uh, taught us took us to school a little bit. So I want to bring that one to the light and get that guy uh, congratulations. Uh, you got his name or his YouTube handle? You know, I haven't asked none of these people for their permission. Um, okay, so well I, we won't I, we won't put them out there. But I can admit, in the next video, we can we can certainly acknowledge them. If So if you're watching this, if, and if you hear one of your comments being addressed here, if you want us or give us permission to you know acknowledge that this comment came from you, let me know in the comments of this video, and I will, you know, I'll give you a shout out on the next video that we do, uh, which will probably be next Sunday, unless, of course, you guys don't have anything else for us. And it was two or three pages. You can just kind of hit some high points, but he... He went off, and he he's pretty sharp. So, but uh, I believe it was you know why you look. I think he was trying to reference where he seemed like it was a lot of stuff there that wasn't uh, going to be viable. And I I have a, a maybe just a thirty second story. I remember my first uh, financial presentation, and the professor told me I did WD forty. And to give you an example how old I am, I recommended WD-40 as a buy when they were $34. How so much are they now, Chris? I, I, have, I followed them. It's been over a decade ago, but 
almost 300 maybe something like that oh, man. they were trading at 34 i, I did my uh, very first equity analysis on wd40 i uh, i recommended a buy i felt like they were 44 dollars and they were undervalued and uh, they put it inside the portfolio i actually uh, ran into a guy that went to the same business school i went to and asked him was wd40 still a part of that uh portfolio and he said yes and i said yeah i'm the one that put it in there uh, 15 years ago so I'm kind of excited about that, but to get back what we're talking about, the when you look at the first presentation I did, and I just blew it. You know, I, w- I was nervous. I didn't really know what I was talking about. Uh, w- you know, it's true with a lot of, uh, you know, first acts and endeavors in life, but the professor pulled me to the side and he says, hey, you got your facts straight, but we don't care how you feel. When you are asking for money or asking a firm to initiate coverage or buy, or buy rating, all they care about is the facts. We don't care how you feel. You may like them. You can love them. You can like their products. You can do anything you want, but we only want the facts. No one cares about your emotion. And I learned a valuable lesson that day. I went back and redone that presentation and, you know, blew everybody away. But that was a that was a big uh, uh, stepping stone and learning point in my life because no one cares about your emotion when you're asking uh, for capital dollars to fund a uh, corporate America company, stuff like this. So I just try to shy away from it and, and let this guy go. Non analysts would always feel like, Hey, we we're undervalued because you didn't consider this. You didn't consider that. And I'll tell you, you know, who else not considering it? The CEO of the company. So <laughs> there you go. Uh, summit doesn't say anything about any of these patents. He's lost hope in all of them or, you know, not hope and acquire with, um, have access to them and of course you buy all that but these patents in the hands of NVIS are not as valuable as they would be in the hands of Microsoft and that's why you have a low valuation on them so we we oh another analogy you give me a sword and you give a samurai sword I'm not going to be as effective with it as a samurai even though it's the same sword and we both have two arms so NVIS needs to get all of this technology into the hands of someone who can use it effectively, and that's where you're going to see the value. But until that happens, it is basically worthless. It's a liability to these guys. They are spending more on R&D and payroll and all these prototypes than they're actually making. So it is a liability, and it does sound bearish, but that's only because the conversation is bearish. And if you look at this conversation Anyway, other than bearish, I got some beachfront property in Colorado to sell you. Uh, send me uh, PayPal or Cash App uh, because I need some of that money too. Wait, a, a beachfront property in Colorado? Oh yeah, oh yeah. For real, Chris? What's your PayPal? And they, and they have to you you you, you <laughs> have to be rational when you look at it. And I know it's a lot of passionate people, but deep down, you know, if something big happens with this company, it's going to the moon. It's okay to believe that, but know where this company stands if that doesn't happen. What he's trying to tell you guys is don't take all of grandma's savings and dump it into this company right now. About 5% will do. Yeah, just know where you are. This is this is what this company is worth if they don't get a contract. If they get a contract, I had a, a, a YouTuber leave me a comment saying uh, NVIS to the moon, and I'm like, hey, I'm there with you, buddy. There is no reason for me to hate because I don't have a position. So obviously, I want all of these companies to do well, and plus they're in bed with the, uh, you know, the United States military. So yeah, I mean, I want our, uh, you know, men and women in uniform to have the best technology. So I'm rooting for these guys. I'm rooting for the sideline, unless these guys go down to two or three dollars a share. I'm gonna be uh, leaving you bad comments at that point, Pat. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. So here's here's the thing. So. I've got some of these comments pulled up. I think we just answered one. I'm going to go ahead and read it anyways. Uh, this one says, What value do you or your guest place on the 500 plus patent portfolio? Much of it is proprietary tech in the AR, VR, and LiDAR automotive LiDAR markets. Do you have anything to add? Or- Zero. Because, for one, those patents do not generate cash flows. Uh, for two, microvision does not value them. And three, like I just mentioned, it is basically worthless in the hands of microvision. See, these guys need an OEM uh, partner to boat this stuff to. They don't build houses. They don't build cars. They don't have a, a military uh, you know, contract. 
So these guys are over with. They're like a custom paint job. They can take your car and turn it into and put custom paint and custom wheels and, and make it something magnificent. But they don't build the cars. So they need to find a car partner. You have to already have a car to use their products. If I'm walking or using Uber or do the subway every day, I have no need for a custom paint shop. Even though, and that's not a knock against the paint shop. They have really cool chameleon paint. It's just that I don't have a need for it. That's all it is. That's that's it in a nutshell. Okay, so you said that Microvision cannot do anything with these patents, but some of these people that are watching the video are going to say, okay, well, this is why Microsoft is going to buy Microvision out. That could happen. That's that is my that's my theory. I did a 10-minute uh, add-on to part two of uh, Bulls or BS, and I addressed that off the record. I took kind of uh, my analysis hat off and said, look, guys, Let's just talk, Frank. Um, I'm with you on this, Microsoft. I think, based on everything I read, I think they offer the most value to Microsoft. Now, until that happens, it's all speculation. And if it does happen, these guys are going to the moon. Everybody already knows that. But it's just a couple of things you need to realize. One is Summit just got $61 million in cash. So he doesn't have to do anything for five years. This story is already 30 years long. He just got $60 million in cash. He could sit there five more years. If you can hang in there five more years with the liquidity and you don't need it to, to go elsewhere, uh, fine, stay there. But no, he doesn't have to do anything. And if you understand the situation that that company is in now and they can't do anything to it, and if you, you don't catch on to any of these analysis, use this analogy here. Put all 500 patents that Microvision have, or, you know, I don't know the, the right number or whatever, but we'll, we'll say 500. Okay, give them to you. Go right now, look under your mattress, and there they are. How profitable will you be tomorrow or next year with those patents? Because Microvision is just as profitable with them. Wait a minute. What are you trying to say, Chris? Like, they're just as good with those patents as me or you. Oh, my god! But if you put those patents in the right in Microsoft hands, hey, the sky's the limit. Put it in Apple's hands, the sky's the limit. In my hands or your hands or Microvision's hands, they can't make any money. They've proven. Like, how many more uh, negative quarters, consecutive negative quarters, does these guys need to understand that Microvision can't do anything with these patents? <laughs> they right. have to get acquired. It's me with the samurai sword. Yeah, I can swing it and cut you here and there, but I don't stand a chance against a ninja or a swordsman or a barbarian. Or, you know, it's you have people in the field that do this, and then you have people in the field that kind of do it on the side, and Microvision does it on the side. So, and it's no, again, it's no hate. This is just a fact of life. It is what it is. They will get acquired. Some people are going to get rich. Again, if you want my cash app, if you're down there in that 70 cent buy-in, hey, help a brother out. <laughs> but uh, outside of that, you know, it is what it is, Pat. All right, guys, as I explained at the beginning, this is part one of a two video series. Unfortunately, I got to cut it off here because of uh, time. You see, this video is getting way too long. I don't want a lot of people dropping off, which I'm sure will happen already anyways. So be sure to be on the lookout for part two coming tomorrow at the same time don't forget to smash that like button if you like the dd and appreciate our hard work don't forget to leave a comment if you have any other questions that we need to cover or if you have anything that you're challenging us on i did uh speak with some other youtubers on my channel or in the comments of my channel and i thought we were going to do a collab it didn't quite turn out you guys know who you are if uh, you want to come back and do that with me, let me know. I'm down to argue my position with anybody. While I have you here, I wanted to quickly tell you about the brand new First Trade app, available for mobile or PC. The platform will give you access to powerful and easy to use tools and allows you to trade with less restrictions, zero commissions, zero fees, and you can use the first link in the description below to download a free stock today without having to deposit any money. This will greatly help out the channel and is always appreciated. And now back to your regularly scheduled programming. Congrats, ladies and gentlemen, you've made it to the end of the video. If you like what you watched, make sure you subscribe because I put out videos just like this one every single day. And 
please do me a favor and smash that like button if I helped you in any way because it really goes a long way in helping the channel out and keeps me motivated to make videos every single day. Now there's a lot of work involved, a lot of research, and a lot of time and effort into editing and putting these out daily for you guys. You can subscribe from your screen right now or if you want to watch one of my other videos, I'm sure YouTube has some good content picked out for you on the left hand side of your screen now. Thanks for sticking it out with me till the end and I will see you guys in the next video.